It is my mission by the end of this video to teach you how to make video games in your terminal. So we have LS, we have PWD, it's a terminal. But every once in a while you run across something that makes you think, wait, what is this thing, right? So SL, perhaps you've run this command before, and a train just casually goes across your screen and you start thinking, what even is a terminal? Because when I type things in, they happen from top to bottom. They don't fly all over the place. But if you look carefully at this train, you'll notice that it's all just characters, ASCII characters. Before we go any further, we're gonna need ANSI escape codes. This is really the secret sauce to making a game in your terminal. For example, right here, I have the ANSI escape code for hiding your cursor. Let me show you what this looks like. Okay, I've opened up a very simple bash uh, shell, and uh, it's important that I have a simple bash shell here because I don't want a fancy prompt that might kind of jump in and uh, get in the way of things. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hide my cursor. So you can see my cursor there, I'm going to hide it. First thing I'm gonna use here is printf. So printf is a command that's I'm sure on your system. Uh, and then you just pass it a string. So here I'm gonna give it hello, and then slash n, that means new line. Hit enter, and it prints hello. Okay, now this time I'm gonna do printf, but I'm going to pass it an escape sequence, which is right here. Now this escape sequence is gonna tell the terminal, not bash, the terminal, I don't want you to do this literally. I'm going to put it in single uh, quotation marks here because otherwise bash is going to try and interpret it. And by running this command, it doesn't print anything and now my cursor is gone. I can still type, but my cursor is gone. To get my cursor back, I'm going to use the next ANSI escape code, which is very similar. This time with an H. There, I've shown my cursor again. Already, you should be getting the idea that there are escape codes that I can give to my terminal and it's going to do things other than just print text to the screen. The next one we're going to do is clear and I'm going to clear the screen with this code. Trust me, this is all building to something. The last ANSI escape code that I'm going to show you here, there are a lot of them, but the last one that we need is this one, which is going to move our cursor to a given location. This is the column and this is the row and we're back up here. Now, you'll see I'm not actually there because my prompt has gotten in the way. So let's do that again. I'm going to jump down here. I'm gonna get rid of my prompt by saying PS1 equals nothing. So now I have no prompt. I'm still here. Echo, hi, I'm still here. Uh, but now let's run that command again. And there I am, I'm in the top left. Now let's put all this together and we're gonna use a bash script. So I've, I've written one here. Let's take a look at it, it's called ANSI does three things. It hides the cursor, it clears the screen, and then it moves to 1010. So let's try that out and see how that works. So we're going to do bash ansi.sh. Okay, so what has it done? It's clearly hidden my cursor, it's cleared the screen, and it's moving down 10, but it hasn't moved me over 10 because, again, bash is getting in the way. Bash just really, really wants to be in charge. Okay, now I've updated the script a little bit. Let's run it again, and it's going to draw this little box. How is that working? So oh, same idea, hide the cursor, clear the screen, move to one, and then I'm gonna print out a bunch of octothorps. Then I'm gonna move down, print out more octothorps, they move down, more, move down, more, move down, more, and that's the whole idea. So hopefully at this point you're convinced, yeah, I can clearly render things to my terminal. And as soon as you can render things to some kind of screen, be that canvas, be it a terminal, whatever, now you can make a game. Okay, let's watch that train again. You can see a bunch of characters. They're just being printed at different locations and it looks like animation is happening. That's all that's going on there. Same thing with ASCII Aquarium. Looks very complicated, but ultimately there is some logic in the back, but then it's just printing characters to the screen. The zero player game I made, exact same idea. All these are is emojis being printed to my terminal window. And because my uh, terminal font supports emojis, it works. The logic is all in a program and then I'm just rendering it to the terminal using ANSI escape codes. What we're gonna build out is actually the game Snake uh, because the game Snake is very easy to draw, uh, hard for me to play and talk at the same time, but uh, it's a pretty simple game. Everyone knows how it works. And so I, th I think it's a good game to learn how to do this. Now, if you've been to the channel recently, uh, it will be no surprise, I'm gonna do this in Go. This should work in pretty much any language. I'm sure you could do it in Bash, JavaScript, whatever, Python, whatever you're comfortable with. I'm gonna do it in Go and uh, you know the repo is available so you can look at the code. I don't have very many dependencies in this uh, project. First one I have here is go tty, 
what this is going to let me do is going to let me get terminal input, uh, you know, cross platform. So it'll work on Mac, uh, Linux, you know, whatever windows, I believe it'll work there too. I'm also using this package from Google, which lets me get the dimensions of the uh, terminal window and I have a couple indirect dependencies as well from my actual dependencies. Okay, the first file I have here is term.go and this is where I'm putting all my terminal stuff. So this file has everything that I need to do to interact with the terminal. On line 11, I'm creating a buffer that you can that I can write to. Uh, and then once that buffer is ready, then I can spit it all out to the screen. You could spit it all out to the screen, which is just standard out. You could spit it all out, you know, instantaneously. It probably wouldn't matter. But I like the idea of kind of buffering everything. And then once it's all ready, print. So what's hide cursor? Hide cursor is, again, ANSI escape code. Show cursor is ANSI escape code. Move cursor, clear. These are ANSI escape codes. Draw, this is not an ANSI escape code. This is just, you know, outputting to standard out. And I've got this method down here, get size. And again, that's going to use my dependency to figure out the size of the terminal. And uh, it's important to know that the top left, where are you? Yeah, top left position there, that is one, one. It's not zero, zero, it's one, one. And then the bottom right is the maximum size of your terminal. Okay, so with that file, I have everything I need to write to my terminal window. All of this clearly is in the description in GitHub. I only have one more file of code, and uh, this is my main file, and uh, this is where I'm going to define types and, you know, talk about what the game actually is. So if you look at this game, right, of Snake, there's a few nouns that we can pick out here, right? So clearly I've got my, I've got my snake here. He goes and gets, I think, what's canonically called food, right? He gets food. As he gets food, he gets bigger, right? And uh, it's always added on to the end of the snake. Um, snake has a direction and uh, there's also a score and the score increments as I get food. There are also boundaries. So if I hit the screen, game over. Also, if I crash into myself, game over. Okay, so here are the types that I have set up. Uh, I have direction, which is essentially it's an enum, position. So a position is just your X and Y coordinates, right? So one, one or 13, five. I'm using a two element array to represent this. You could use whatever you want. I've got a snake and all a snake is, is a body, which is an array or a slice would say in Golang, but an array of positions, right? So the head is the first position and then it goes on from there and a direction, which direction is the snake traveling in? And then finally I have a game and the game has a score. It has a snake and it has food. Food is also just a position. It doesn't need anything else. All right, here we go. We have a new game. The first thing new game is going to do is going to randomize our theater. In Golang, you have to do that. In a lot of other languages, you don't have to. We're going to make a new snake. We're going to make a game. The food's going to be in a random position. And then we're going to listen for key press. Listening for key press is actually maybe the most complicated thing in this entire game. If you think about the way you normally interact with the terminal, you type a command, nothing happens, then you hit enter and then something happens. You'd be shocked if you typed ls and instantaneously before you hit enter, you know, all your files are listed. But with a game, as soon as I hit up or down, I want that to happen. I don't want to hit enter. So for that reason, we're reading directly from the TTY. Okay, I've temporarily modified my program just to print any input. I open the TTY, I read from it, and then I print out you pressed and whatever character they pressed. And this is what it looks like. If I press A, you see, you pressed A. If I press B, can you imagine what you'll get? This works totally fine for most characters. But what if I hit up? What if I hit down? What if I hit left or right? You can see that when I hit these keys, the input that my TTY is getting is actually two separate characters. I've got this opening square bracket and an A, and it's a capital A. Same thing for down, left, and right. And that makes reading these things a little bit more complicated. But luckily for me, I don't need to be that sophisticated. I can op ignore the opening square bracket. And then if I see a capital A at any point, that's north. Same thing goes for B, south, C, east, D, west. It took me five times to get that. But now we're reading input and all we're doing is we're changing the direction of the snake. So when I press up, it sends open square bracket capital A. I read that, I throw away the open square bracket, I check the capital A and I move my snake up. Now I don't actually move my snake up, I change the direction so it's going up and the snake just goes whatever direction it's told to go. Hopefully you're starting to see how simple this actually is. And if you're feeling overwhelmed, I learned all of this in the past two weeks. There's a lot of small concepts that you have to learn, but once you learn it, it's 
pretty straightforward. All right, there's one more thing I have to do before the game starts. I have to hide the cursor and then I have to listen for an interrupt signal. I'm sure it's happened to you before that you've run some program and realized this is never gonna end. So you hit control C and that ends it. What I've done there is I've said interrupt, signal interrupt. I don't want you to keep doing that. And if the program can't handle it, then it just stops the program. But I wanna make sure I handle it because remember I've hidden the cursor and at the end I wanna print out the score. So I have something in my code to handle that event. When I see that event, I'm going to do something. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say game over, score three, give you back your screen. And that's exactly what I'm doing right here. Now th this is a bit of go, but I'm creating a channel. And then once I get something on that channel, I'm going to call g.over, game over. Game over is going to clear using our ANSI escape codes, show the cursor, move the cursor to the top, and then draw game over and the score. And then we're gonna render it. Okay, so we've set up our game. We're ready to handle any incoming input. We're ready to handle somebody hitting Control C to exit the game. Probably should let them hit Q too. That would be polite, but I have not done that. And now it's time for the actual game loop. And I mean that literally, it's a for loop uh, that never ends. Then we wanna check and see, did you hit a wall? Did you run into yourself? If not, we're gonna add that new uh, position to the snake. And if you didn't get any food, then we take off the last position, right? So it looks like the snake is moving, but really I've just added one here and taken one off there. But if you did get food, I don't take off that last piece. And then I just draw the game state. Drawing the game state is also pretty simple. I have a status bar, which I show at the top, and I'm just choosing that location and printing it out. Then I go and I draw the food. And then for each position in the snake's body, I just draw either a capital O, if you're the head, otherwise a little O. And then I put the game to sleep for 50 milliseconds. The reason I do that is because otherwise the game will be unplayable. If we drop this down to one millisecond, so only sleeping one millisecond, let's watch how fast this is. Here we go. Unplayable, okay, you can't even see it. If I bump this up to a thousand milliseconds, which is one second, here we go. Literally unplayable. This is actually worse, I think, because it feels like you can kind of play it, but this is terrible. But what it's doing is it's sleeping for one second every time. So it's going through the loop and then sleeping, going through the loop and then sleeping. But it does give you a good sense of how this is actually working, right? I have a direction, the snake moves in that direction and he's got his little uh, body parts that follow him around. And that's the whole thing, right? We started off with simple ANSI escape codes and we just keep getting a little bit more complicated, a little bit more complicated. But at the end of the day, all we're doing is we're clearing the screen, we're having some kind of background state, and then we're rendering that state using ANSI escape codes. If you've ever programmed in React, that's a lot like what we're doing here. And so this game that I showed at the start, hopefully this makes more sense to you now, right? Each one of these is a ship object or struct, and it, it has like a, a position it wants to get to, and it has enemies and it can shoot at them, but all of that, that's just Go code. And then I'm rendering it with ANSI escape sequences. And this all just happens in the terminal and to me like that is pretty amazing. Now there are libraries out there that will help you get some of this functionality, make these things easier for you, especially if you're doing like a text user interface, a TUI, uh, you probably don't want to be doing the escape sequences yourself. They'll have nice little helpers to do boxes for you. Or there's libraries like ncurses, ASCII Aquarium is a Perl script that uses ncurses. Uh, so there's lots of different ways to do that. But under the hood, I'm sure most of them are doing the exact same thing, ANSI escape sequences. I said ASCII earlier. Anytime I said ASCII, forget about that. If you've made a terminal game or if you have one that you really like, please let me know. Oh, I should show you one. So this is Wordle in the terminal uh, and I think this is pretty cool. This is built in Go using uh, a library. I think it's Bubble Tea. I actually made a PR because there's a couple bugs, but guy won't merge my PRs. I don't know, where is he? Another one I really like is this free cell game uh, written in C++, which uh, yeah, I think is very cool. You know, I grew up Windows XP playing free cell. And so I like to have this in my terminal too. But yeah, have you made anything? Have you made a cool game? Or is there one that you play in your terminal? I'd love to see it. I'm always interested in that kind of thing. Anyway, hope you're having a good day. Talk to you soon. Bye.